Is Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein my favorite movie of all time? I don't know. Wait a minute. Isn't he on third? When I was a kid, television was comparatively new. It had been around for maybe 10 years, if that. And color TV was still a few years away. If you lived in a major media market like New York or Los Angeles, you had the three national networks, CBS, NBC, ABC, as well as a bunch of independent stations. And they were busy trying to fill their airtime by renting blocks of movies from studios like RKO, Universal, Britain's Ealing Studios, and Japan's Toho Studios. So as a consequence, we got to see a lot of movies. Yes, they were in black and white, and yes, they were cut with commercials, but they were movies, and movies were magic. And so were monsters. And I was a big monster fan. I loved the big city stompers like King Kong and Godzilla. I also liked the universal monsters. And I was a fan of Forrest J. Ackerman's famous Monsters of Filmland, sort of the Bible of movie monsters. I even used to buy the original Mars Attacks bubblegum trading cards. In fact, I still have them. Besides monsters, Abbott and Costello movies were a big part of most kids' viewing habits, and they all played on the Million Dollar Movie. The ones that I liked all seemed to have a fantasy element. The time of their lives has Lou as one of two ghosts from the Revolutionary War who must haunt a mansion down through the ages. It's not as funny as some of the others, but it has some poignant moments. Hold That Ghost has the great comedian Joan Davis and the Andrews sisters. But the big one was Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, and this did not premiere on the Million Dollar Movie. Back then, the only major network to show a movie in prime time was NBC and the NBC Saturday Night at the Movies. So when they announced the world television premiere of Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, every kid in America went crazy with anticipation. It, it was all we could talk about in the schoolyard. And when the big night came, the movie did not disappoint. It was great. In fact, one of their best. Count Dracula, with the assistance of a corrupt female surgeon who may or may not be a Nazi on the run, wants to transplant Lou Costello's brain into the body of the Frankenstein monster. Meanwhile, sad sack Larry Talbert and his better half the Wolfman is hot on Dracula's tail. Among the movie's many pleasures are two great jokes. At one point, Lon Chaney turns and says, you don't understand, tonight when the moon is full, I'm going to turn into a wolf. To which Costello replies, yeah, you and a million other guys. The other is a throwaway. During the big climax, when the monsters are chasing everyone through the castle, Costello must pretend to be Dracula. He does so by whipping off a tablecloth from this table, but all the glasses and plates remain upright as if in a magic trick. And Costello does this quick take to the audience as if to say, not bad, huh? No, not bad at all. In fact, it's my favorite bit in the entire movie. But that is not the end of the story. In our house, we had a series of upright poles called room dividers. They separated the living room from the dining room. They were thin and round and had small holders for plants, and they were separated evenly on either side, creating a walkway between the two areas. Well, one rainy Saturday, our dad closed the living room curtains and hung a white sheet between the two sets of room dividers. He had gotten his hands on an 8mm movie projector, and all of a sudden he's showing movies. Cartoons mostly. I remember Woody Woodpecker and the last reel of Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Yeah, we had just recently seen the movie on TV, and yeah, the 8mm reel didn't have sound, but it didn't matter. It was special, more special than TV. Maybe it was those beams of light cutting through the darkness. Thanks for the magic, Dad. I'll see you around the campus.